In this Elden Ring video, we're going to talk about a bunch of new information that was revealed yesterday by Game Informer. They got to reveal some exclusive gameplay footage of two near areas, Castle Morn, which is located in the Weeping Peninsula, and Lurinia of the Lakes, which is sort of a swampy area, and they had some other information as well. In this video, I sort of want to break that down, consolidate it so you don't got to go scouring all over the internet to try and find it, get you all that information in one video. However, before I get into that, I want to remind you guys that we have an Elden Ring giveaway going on right now. We are giving away a collector's edition of the game. It's not the one with the helmet. We weren't able to get one of those, but it's the regular collector's edition of the game, and we have 20 copies of the game. Make sure you sign up for that on the Elden Ring Wiki homepage. We'll probably have at least one or two more collector's editions giveaways, so stay tuned for those as well. The first thing I want to talk about are the classes. There are a total of 10 classes in Elden Ring, something you probably knew. But apparently the list of names are Vagabond, Warrior, Hero, Bandit, Astrologer, Prophet, Samurai, Prisoner, Intelligencer, and Wretch. Wretch is sort of the deprived class from Dark Souls and Dark Souls 3, if you're familiar with that class at all. I'm not sure if Intelligencer is like a mistranslation or if that's actually the name of it. If it is, fine, whatever. Uh, but those should be the 10 classes available in Elden Ring. Besides the Wretch, the Hero we know is kind of like a Barbarian class. It's got Strength, Vigor, it's going to be, you know, has an Axe, that sort of archetype. I would imagine Warrior is like Sword Shield. Uh, Bandit's probably your Dex class. Samurai might have the Samurai armor that we've seen in some of the uh, screenshots. It also probably has a Katana and a Bow, something like that. Intelligencer is, Intelligencer is probably your Mage. Uh, Prophet is probably uh, you know your Faith-based class. So you can kind of theorize on what these are. We don't know their exact stats yet, but hopefully we'll get that information soon. We also do know that you'll be able to select from starting gifts like in previous games, so there are things you can choose from. We don't know what the exact list of those things are, but there is supposed to be at least one key item that you can use to unlock something. We're not quite clear what you can unlock yet, but there are things you're going to be able to do similar that seems like Dark Souls 1. The next thing I want to talk about is Castle Morn. This is an optional dungeon of sorts that's located in the Weeping Peninsula, which is south of Limgrave, so if you played the network test, or you're familiar with the network test area, this is going to be south. It's the big island down there. Castle Morn is located in this area. It's completely optional, meaning that you don't have to go to this area. And we got to see a boss fight there with someone called the Leonin Halfbreed, who uses the Grafted Blade Greatsword, which is acquired from him if you kill him. Uh, and it has an Ash ability on it called Oath of Vengeance. I don't know exactly what that does. I think it raises your stats and poise, if I remember correctly. But apparently that weapon has like really beefy attribute requirements. So you're going to have to be pretty heavily invested in strength probably in order to use that. But the whole area is kind of like in water. The castle looks like it's been under siege. You're seeing people fighting in it. Uh, it's a very like watery beach area. It looks really, really cool. And it's markedly different from some of the areas we've seen in previous gameplay. The other area that was shown by Game Informer is Lunaria of the Lakes. It's sort of this like big watery area with buildings and sort of like fog and crustaceans and things like this. Um, I believe it's the valley area that you see with the fog around it in the screenshots. Um, or from the characters standing up there on the cliff kind of overlooking it. I'm pretty sure that's this area. Um, it's supposed to be another legacy dungeon, this area. So you could think of this as being of like a contained area, kind of like Stormvale, that's probably got a like demigod boss in it that contains one of the great runes. So I'd be curious to see how that, like how big that area is, but it looks absolutely massive from the gameplay. And the last area I want to talk about is called Round Table Hold. This is an area that you can only fast travel to. It's effectively the new Firelink Shrine or whatever you want to call it, uh, where all your NPCs are going to gather throughout the game. You know, you can go there and talk to the blacksmith, who looks kind of like Andre, apparently. Big surprise there. His name is Hugh. Um, and there are other uh, NPCs there as well, like a beast clergyman. Um, Mo Melina will be there as well. Fia will be there, who's sort of like a, a bedchamber maiden. Um, there are, and there are a lot of other NPCs that were sort of revealed that gather in this area um, that will remind players a lot of Firelink Shrine. Before I get to the next thing, the, another thing to mention is that there are trainers located in this area, so you can train your spells or your skills, etc., uh, which is pretty common for the Souls-type games, so you can expect that in this area as well. So another really big reveal, probably one of the biggest reveals for people uh, from Game Informer, is that the Moonlight Greatsword will be available in the game in some form. I don't know if it's going to be called Moonlight Greatsword, uh, or Giant Sword of Moonlight, or Large Sword of Moonlight, or whatever the version is, but there's going to be the uh, Moonlight Greatsword in some version in the game. I think people were expecting that and anticipating it, but that is now confirmed. That's pretty much the most important points of everything. I, I went through the gameplay, I went through you know the breakdown, uh, I read the articles that were posted on Game Informer. Um, I think the biggest takeaway from this is, one, that the world is extremely large and very, very different. Each zone is very different from one another. 
I think there might have been some concern from people who just saw the closed network test that things kind of looked samey, but that was in one biome. Once you get outside that biome, they start changing, and it, you can really see in the gameplay how each area looks interesting and unique on its own, and it looks very, very different, and it's just absolutely massive. This is one of the things we said in our gameplay video um, way back when, a couple months back, is that the game is absolutely massive. I think From Software has been downplaying how big this game is, and they, I, I don't know if it's to keep the bar as low as possible so they can surmount it, or they just are trying to keep things hidden so that you can explore it and enjoy it and get like a really big surprise when you play. The game is absolutely huge. I think the other big takeaway from this, uh, for me personally anyway, is that Daniel Tack, the senior editor at Game Informer, cannot speak highly enough of the game. He's obviously seen more than any of us have seen at this point, except maybe a few other people. And he is saying that this is not only the best From Software game he's seen, but he thinks it might be one of the best games he's ever played. And while I've been thinking secretly in my head that this is probably gonna be the best From Software game, that is amazing to hear. It's really difficult like that to stick your neck out and, you know, especially after we had such a kerfluffle with Cyberpunk being really a letdown for a lot of people, myself included, um, to go out there and make a statement after playing a game for 10 hours that it's not only the best From Software game, but to state that it's one of the best games he's ever played and he's really, really looking forward to it. That parrots everything that I've been seeing. Everyone I've spoken to that's played the game or talked to within the industry all feel like this is probably the best From Software game, and maybe they're thinking it's one of the best games. They haven't said that to me, but I think we've all been in agreement, at least the people I've talked to, that this is probably going to be the best From Software game made. Obviously, maybe they'll surpass it in the future, but that is what I have been thinking all the way, and to hear him say that just kind of reinforces this concept that this game is going to be absolutely fantastic. You know, we made a video a few months ago about why people should pre-order Elden Ring, and there are a lot of people in the comments going, like, never pre-order... Uh, it's a bad practice, and generally I agree with that. But we, what our argument was is that From Software is not CD Projekt Red, From Software is not Bethesda, From Software is not Bioware, From Software is not Naughty Dog. Whatever your, you know, From Software is or, or worried that Elden Ring might be, I feel like most of those fears should be laid to rest by now. I'm not saying you have to go pre-order the game. Um, I'm just saying that I feel like From Software has not let us down, and to give them the benefit of the doubt until they do is a courtesy. So what do you guys think so far from seeing the gameplay? Are you encouraged by what you've seen in the other gameplay? Is it reassuring to see markedly different areas and to hear about all these cool things? Like, the exploration looks unreal in this game. And I would be shocked if we didn't see more about this game soon. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below.